Hello and welcome to this episode of Fort Worth Forward. We're here at Create Fort Worth and have an exciting lineup for you today. We have Kara Waddell with Child Care Associates, Bill Chin, who is CEO of the Tech Network, and Jose Alfaro, who's CEO of CoStarters. I'm ready to get this episode started, so let's go. And now I'm here with Kara Waddell, who's President and CEO of Child Care Associates. They're performing a very vital role here in Fort Worth and Tarrant County in the area, right? Absolutely, and great to be here with you. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Tell us a little bit for our viewers that don't know what Child Care Associates does and how wide a, a birth you really have in the area. Tell us about it. Yeah, I mean, 50 plus years ago, um, this community was experiencing a crisis in child care because women decided to work outside the home. Right. Um, we had more single parent households than ever before. And so child care became this crisis and there was illegal child care and church basements opening up and um, our communities came together like we do and looked at the data and said we can do better and they formed an organization which later became Child Care Associates that we built some new early learning facilities and brought best practices related to young children zero to five. So Child Care Associates is really just about issues facing children zero to five. And there are lots of issues I would say. Uh, well, back up for a second, 50 years ago, yeah. and it's really hard, I think, for people to understand this, that maybe they, they, if, as you focus on it, your grandmother didn't work, my grandmother did, mm -hmm. but a lot of people didn't. My mother was a homemaker, yep. but really people in the, in the late 60s, early 70s, women started going into the workforce, Yeah. and it was a whole new thing, and maybe you had an aunt or a grandmother or someone to take care of you, but if you didn't, you had to find childcare. Yeah. My mom was a stay-at-home mom. Um, I wrote an essay award-winning um, okay. in the there county <laughs> for why I want to be a homemaker. Oh, wow. And, and so I'm like, I believe in homes. I yeah. believe in strong families. I always have and was raised in one. But yeah, not every family um, can, should, or want to you know, stay home. Right. Um, we obviously have a country where we have most families are dual income in some way. And and so you know we need we need that support. Um, right. Lower income families especially need that support since the cost of childcare is just inaccessible for them. And and we're really more focused on um, especially our at risk or disadvantaged, disadvantaged households where they just can't do that 100% on their own. And we're trying to kind of give not just the working parent a boost, but the child a boost in their learning and development as well. Yeah, and, and I'll say this: homemakers. Great. My mother was one. There are Absolutely. people that really want to focus and, and stay at home with their children. Yeah. I married a, a, a woman that had no desire to stay home and she yeah. always wanted a career and that's great too. And so we, we need everything. And, and what your organization is focused on is making sure that there is quality, affordable child care for people in this area. Absolutely. And, and give us some of those numbers of what it really takes and putting on the on the table of what salaries need to be made to afford childcare in this area and how y'all help yeah. with that. I mean, lower income families, it can absorb 25, 30, 40, 45 percent of their household, mm -hmm. depending on the number of their household income, just to pay for childcare. And, and so that point becomes disadvantageous really to Yeah, to work, and then right? and so you know, Texas loves families, but Texas also loves working families. Right. And so, you know, we have to be able to step up on behalf of our working families. And so we manage resources that are available for low income families to, you know, access and help pay for that. But we're also interested in making sure that that child is not just in a babysitting environment, but they're in a high quality Sitting in front of a TV or something like that. Absolutely. They're really getting education while they're... Yeah, there's roughly a thousand licensed child care programs in Tarrant County, and we've contracted with 600 of them. So we're wow. working to improve their quality, um, that they're using a curriculum, that they have qualified educators, but it's tough. The um, A child care educator in Tarrant County, on average, earns $12.60. Wow. Um, an hour. And so we pay our parking lot attendants more. We pay our Bucky's cashiers more. And it's. And these are the people that are taking care of our children. Our that are going babies, right? Who we care deeply about. But it's, it's, it's not a system that's designed. You know, when, when you and I were young, there was a public education system. There wasn't really a child care system. Right. Well, today we really have the same system we had when we were young. That's true. It's, 50 it's years hundred later, percent yes. relied on parents with just a little bit of public assistance for our lower income families. And it's not doing well, especially right. after COVID. And so we're really having to rethink, do parents, are they a hundred percent on their own have to take care of their children from zero to five? Or are there some supports that um, a loving community, a loving state can rally around just to make sure that they can work and they can be a, a strong and independent family as well as the child can show up ready to learn in school. Yeah, and that, that's an idea too. When we were growing up, I think I did half day kindergartens. Yeah. And eventually they realized we got to expand this to full day kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Now we have pre-K. 
But I think what's happened overall, and, and I'd love your opinion on this, is we now understand that zero to six, you are soaking up so much information during that time, and it doesn't mm -hmm. just start at four or five or six, that you have a lot of learning to do, so you come in ready, right? Yeah, I mean, the, the brain grows the fastest in those zero to three years, but it's the, it's the age, and from a child zero to 18 or zero to 21, it's the age we least invest in. So the area of greatest return on investment, we actually put the least amount of money in. And it's hard, it's hard to fix that now. We, we love public education and we love schools and, and we need more resources for that. And it's very hard to kind of make the argument, maybe we should be helping families more with young children. That's it's tough. Uh, it's, it's tough and it's an important point and it's something important. we have to continue to talk about. What are some of the things, I know you've done a lot at the local level, at mm -hmm. state level, uh, federal level. I mean, tell us some of the things that you see and you've been working on to ensure that we have the resources coming into, it's not just Tarrant County, you're, you're how many counties? Yeah, the 14 counties that also surround Dallas and Tarrant, what they call North Central Texas. And yes. so basically, almost every county in, in North Texas except Dallas okay. is where we're um, supporting child care programs, growing a core of quality early educators. And so it's it's challenging. We, we, we've been able to, we do get state resources that we deploy. So we cut over a million dollars a week in checks on behalf of low income working families to, to help offset the cost of their care. Um, but we're out working in those programs. We're working with the educators. SMU comes in and evaluates um, our, our quality child care classrooms two times annually gold standard assessment tool and where then we go back in and coach and say here's the things you're doing really well and here's some areas we can help um, you know boost boost what you're doing it so that children are able to learn in those settings do you have how do they affiliate how do you find these child care centers how do how does they, they become part of your network yeah i mean we have we, we've mapped um, um it's um the find uh website find oh, i'm not gonna remember it now <laughs> you may have to cut that okay. i was like what's it called um but we, we've mapped on behalf of tarrant County, all of the available child care that's licensed and regulated and then you know we we have mentors that go out and meet each of these providers we host professional development trainings where we're meeting them but then also encourage them to take the next step with quality with us let's go let's go a step further let's and, go a step further and yeah and there there we have you know hundreds of programs that have stepped up and are doing that and so a parent today can look for a Texas rising star okay. program it's kind of like a star rating for a hotel system sure. and find out are they three star or four star, four star being the highest. And wow. um, they, you know, it's a little bit of a consumer guide for parents so they know what they can be looking for. Did not know that existed. Yeah. That's a great resource for parents as they're looking. They so you it. wear a lot of hats, sort okay. of, I mean, I think, right? <laughs> Presidency. How, tell us a typical day in your life, what you're balancing out. Gosh, I don't know if there is a typical day. <laughs> and what I love, we have some, about 550 employees, and they are the ones who are out working directly, one-on-one -on -one with families um, and engaging. We manage a tremendous amount of public dollars, um, but we try to not act like a government agency, which we're not. Right. Um, we try to be um, responsive to what parents need. We know how to check all the boxes, but we're really trying to be responsive to what families need on the ground. And then we show up at the legislature, and we show up at city council and county to be able to say, this is what's not working. This is what parents need. How can we fix these problems together? So we're both on the ground delivering services. We're also helping all of the providers um, in the early education and child care space. And then we're also showing up, period, showing up. to say, we run these programs and here's what we're really struggling with and cannot do without either additional public investment or sometimes it's just eliminating unnecessary red tape. Right, right. Yeah. Are there some initiatives that you're working on now that you're excited about? I Tell am. us about it. Yeah, there's one right now we're so grateful for Tarrant County investing in a pilot program. They use their one-time ARPA dollars and we've okay. been able to go in and create um, contracts with a, a sampling of about 20 um, child care programs and in that We've gone in, um, the lead economist from Rice University has been coming and meeting one-on-one -on -one with the child care wow. providers. So they're realizing the economics of child care programs, we just don't really understand them and so that we don't know how to fix them. Okay. So he's been building that out, but we've been now adding a supplement, kind of a, a baseline, like a rising tide to their budget so that all of a sudden they can afford to pay their teachers $18 an hour. Wow. Um, we make sure that the children of child care educators working in those programs also can access child care. We're helping offset those costs. We found out by boosting them to $18 an hour, they were suddenly not uh, qualifying for things like food assistance and others. And so there's all of these repercussions that come when we try to 
fix things that sometimes we aren't aware of. And it's a really- Unintended consequences. Unintended, and so, but we have really a national lens. Um, we were written up in several things recently where they're saying, we think a way moving forward is not just to give a voucher to a parent so that they can help pay for childcare, but let's also give an assistance to the program itself. It's like subsidizing the farm right. as well as giving a family maybe food assistance if they're needing. We're saying let's let's offset some of the costs so that we can pay people who take care of our babies a living wage. And that's important. It's interesting you use that concept too because having worked in DC, farm bill and everything else, we do give subsidies to farmers to plant or not plant depending on what the yeah. economy looks like. We also give food subsidies to low income people that, that need it. And so really you're talking about the same thing and that same model here and, and subsidizing. And so uh, it is interesting we have some time, we aren't investing everywhere we should be probably in our, our children. So. Absolutely. And, and our child care system is made up of the faith community. We've got churches and mosques and temples. It's also made up of small nonprofit agencies, small businesses, mm -hmm. uh, minority owned businesses, and sometimes chains. And so it's, it's a patchwork quilt and learning like how do we support that? That's something that Texas is good. We like business, we like right. different approaches to solving a problem for families and letting parents have choices. Right. And childcare offers that, we just need to figure out how do we better support it. Wonderful. So one yeah. last thing I wanna talk yeah. about, um, one of the projects we've been working on for a long period of time good. in Las Vegas Trail. Yeah. Um, you were one of the original members as part of the of LVT Rise, before even tell LVT Rise existed as an mm -hmm. organization that we're putting time and effort into Las Vegas Trail. And so one of the things I'm very excited about that we've been working on, y'all been working on for a long period of time, is a Head Start facility, which y'all yep. run Head Start and, and administer all that. Tell yeah. us about that facility and yeah, well, first of all, I mean, Head Start, for those that don't know, is kind of early education on steroids. Mm -hmm. It's um, a fully, fully a program that's fully covered. The parents pay by volunteering in the program, okay. and they uh, participate and participate in their child's learning. But it's kind of a whole child, whole family approach. We're working with the child. We're also working with parents. These are families that are particularly lower income. We have children in the foster care system, some families experiencing homelessness. And so it's a, it's a family intervention as well as a, a child program. So we were when we saw the data uh, that came together on Las Vegas Trail, we, we have these early Head Start centers and Head Start centers across Tarrant County, across Fort Worth and Arlington, but it's difficult to just pick one up and move them. Right. Sometimes this infrastructure we built was 30, 40, 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. It's aging. Then we built it for preschoolers, now we need it for infants and toddlers. And so when we saw the data on Las Vegas Trail, we knew this is a chance to go in and really model to our community about how we not just build a massive school, but build a neighborhood expression mm -hmm. of care um, and provide the supports that a specific community needs. And we just cannot wait. We're just starting, I, um, I know, to get, it in, <laughs> to get it in place. It's taken a while, those government systems, you know. Government man, systems, I, but I, we'll have a capacity. I mean, this is what yeah. I, I think is we're moving towards to as, as a city is really co-locating a lot of services at our community centers or government offices. And that's yeah. what we're doing there. We're gonna put a Head Start facility yeah. on the LVT RISE, RISE Community Center campus. Yep. Uh, there was a lot of ho hoops to jump through there because it's parkland. Yeah. But, but it, I'm very excited about that. We have the library there. We have a lot of classes that are being held in there, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, well, or Boys and Girls Club, sorry. Boys and Girls Club yep. that's there and some other services. So We've got a food great. pantry next door. When we don't have a food pantry um, nearby, we'll build it within the early learning campus. And right. so, um, you know, I don't look like it by looking at me, but we have, you know, we've been in stop six for years. Our campus director has been there for over 50 years. He's from that community. Wow. And a lot of times our employees have lived and worked and are from that same community. And so we just can't wait to be in Las Vegas Trail and really begin to have those services available. And it's you important. do pre, uh, prenatal too, right? You go out and, and with the mothers and do a lot of work to prenatal. Thanks for bringing it. Yeah, I mean, it, what a better time than to catch a woman and a family right when they're getting ready to have a child. Right. And so we'll engage, we'll work with them, we'll make sure they're getting you know, the health care they need, answer questions, and they're with them even in those first early months. That also guarantees them a spot potentially in the program. So they're kind of on a waiting list, but they're not just sitting around right. not getting services. They're getting the help that they need so that their child can be born healthy and strong, and then we'll take it from there with them, with the parents. That's wonderful. Well, Kara, thanks yeah. for all you're doing. Thanks for the leadership in this community and really taking this issue that I don't think a lot of people really see as an issue because they've, they've figured out themselves, but when you really boil it down, how much your income is being spent yeah. on childcare, what does that mean? Are we keeping, um, are, are good people not going into the workforce, good women or men, because they can't figure out the childcare 
system yeah. and it just makes sense. So I appreciate all you're doing for the community Absolutely. and being Thank really you. a thought leader in this area for us. Well, and Child Care Associates has really been about making sure every child, regardless of neighborhood or zip code, has access to high quality early education and care. I'm sure your kids had the help and support they needed. We want to make sure that happens in every zip code and, and it's a privilege to serve in that way. It's wonderful. Thanks That's for great. being here. I appreciate yeah, the thanks conversation. For having me. Thank you. Yes. Now I'm here with Bill Chen, who is CEO of the DEC Network, an exciting program that's now here in Fort Worth, Texas. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, we're awesome. excited to be here. For those that don't know what the DEC Network is, tell us a little bit about it and what your role is as CEO. Yeah, so we're a 5013C nonprofit. Okay. Uh, we work with entrepreneurs. Just had our 10th birthday. So okay, we'll congratulations. Yeah. Happy thank birthday. You. Yes. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I and mean, we've worked uh, with a lot of entrepreneurs over time. It's been a, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, again, as a nonprofit, our job is is really just to get these folks the resources they need so they can grow. And those resources often include mentors, curriculum, uh, and increasingly capital, trying to get them funded. Funded. And so, as part of the Deck Network, we've now created. You've created. You've helped create here mm -hmm. in Fort Worth. Create Fort Worth. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. What that looks like. Uh, and how that's really beneficial for entrepreneurs here in Fort Worth. Well, we, you know, for us, it's a dream come true. I mean, right. I, you know, I'm a Tarrant County guy, so, okay. you know, I, I really... You spent a little time east, right? Yes, yes exactly. Okay. Yes. So my, my GPS takes me right down to Fort Worth, right, <laughs> automatically. Good. Good. Uh, I love it down here. And, and obviously, if you were going to pick a town in America to just not know anyone and just start with $1,000 in your pocket, Fort Worth has got to be on the top five, wow. right? I mean, just wow. the economics here are just amazing, the growth. Um, the people are so welcoming. Um, so, you know, this was a natural for us and we've been wanting to do it. Certainly, I've been with the DEC for Network for five years. Uh, and really that entire time we've been plotting to come to Fort Worth. Uh, we just had to f find that right moment and I think we found it. So we're, we're, it's been great. Everyone's been very welcoming and it's been a good start. Good, well, we're here in your space. Right. That's here on Bryan, right, yeah. down yeah. In, in your south side. Mm -hmm. uh, really proud, it's a beautiful space, so people should come check it out. What do you see here, if you've looked at the market, the opportunities for entrepreneurs and the challenges for entrepreneurs? Yeah, I mean, the opportunities are just boundless. Um, you know, it's such a great community. Uh, it, it's rare that you find everyone on the same page. I mean, the government has, has just been incredibly helpful. You know, I was so lucky, you know, in the 2000s, I was in Silicon Valley. Okay. And got it a little bit. It's booming then, right? Oh booming. And in fact, I just flew in yesterday from okay. San Jose. Okay. Uh, and it's, it was incredible to be part of that. And that was the one thing that I remember. Uh, I mean, there's been a lot of books written on, on that incredible success. And, and my memory on those books, I'll say the same thing, is everyone was on the same page. Mm -hmm. You had the universities, you had the government, you had the community leaders, you had the nonprofits. Everyone was singing from the same sheet of music and no one was really worried about credit. Everyone was just worried about how do we create an incredible ecosystem. And what I saw back then in Silicon Valley is, is exactly what I see today in Fort Worth. Just incredible collaboration. Everyone sets the egos aside. Everyone just wants to build and it, right. it's fun to be part of. And, and so as an entrepreneur, what, with Create Fort Worth, what can I expect if I want to show up here and say, I need some help? What does that look like? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. Do you want people showing up here? Yeah, we, do, saying, we, do, we do. I mean, I, I love that. We love that question. Yeah. Right? And yeah. we've spent a lot of time trying to answer that question. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, we welcome people walk through the front door and say exactly that. Um, and, and we are going to tell them all of the myriad of resources that are out there, not, not from the DAC network, although we'll certainly list those, um, but really just as an ecosystem, just as a community, there's a lot of things provided here that they don't have in other communities. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you've got that question, entrepreneur, this is the right place to ask it. Um, and, and what we're going to hope to do is refer you to the right person for you. Yeah. Uh, and it's so individual. And, and yes, that's sir. why you need a little, you know, you're, you're going to start with that question, and then we're going to have a few questions. Yeah. Uh, but hopefully when we're done with that process, we'll, we'll steer you to the right entity to help you at this moment. Okay, because you've got a lot of resources here. Mm -hmm. for folks or just through the network itself too. Absolutely. Any highlights there of things you're like, this yeah. is something maybe unusual people haven't thought about? Yeah, I'm not sure, you know, I'm not sure this is going to be a shock to, to anyone, but, but I think that we've certainly found that mentorship is really key in entrepreneurism. Sure. You know, I, I was a professor of entrepreneur, um, entrepreneurship at SMU, so I'm a curriculum guy. I mean, mm -hmm. I've built a lot of curriculums. But the truth of it is, once you've sort of formed a legal entity, mm -hmm. 
uh, there's certainly a group of tasks that form a platform for a new business. But once those are done, you, you diverge from that curriculum so fast. You know, it, it's almost like every week you wake up with a, a different job description yeah. as an entrepreneur. That's an entrepreneur, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> Which fire are you going to put out at this moment that's, that's hitting? Yeah, yeah, no, you know, curriculum can't keep up with that, but right. a mentor can. A mentor in the same vertical. Right. Someone who has worked within that industry, mm -hmm. who started a business with that industry, that's about the only, that's the only resource that's going to be able to keep up with that massive, right. massive change in your weekly job description. Yes, for sure. Is there so, some um, standout, like the biggest myth someone might have as an entrepreneur starting off? Do you have any thoughts there? Yeah, I, I mean, there, there's certainly some myths out there. I, I mean, look, I wouldn't be the first person to just talk about, like, th this is undiluted business, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, like, you know, I worked in the corporate world, and I remember as a, a corporate citizen, I thought, look, you know, I'm, I'm really a pretty good steward of corporate money. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I really think of it as kind of my money. Um, but then the minute I became an entrepreneur, I, I realized how wrong I was. I mean, you are shielded from that undiluted when you're in a corporate stress. setting, right? Yeah. You don't see all the problems. Right? Exactly, yes. right? And when it's your money, when right. it's your money, all of a sudden you're like, yeah, I was a good steward of corporate money. Mm -hmm. You have no idea the stress level when that's your money right. you're spending. So it's very undiluted, you know, marketplace dynamics, and there's stress with that. Um, but there's risk with that, but the reward is tremendous. I mean, if you look at the folks we admire in America, in the business world, mm -hmm. Um, entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs. Absolutely. For sure. Right? For sure. The reward is, is incredible. Yeah. It's funny you talk about your money versus someone in your mm -hmm. job, probably a good steward of it. But when, when it really is, you start making decisions a little differently and you maybe have people yep. relying on you, not maybe your family, but also employees and their families. And you start thinking about things and moves you're making a little different. Are there any standout wins, something that you're proud of in your career? Like you've helped someone you've helped sort of make it or on the path to make it and that you're yeah. rooting for? Any thoughts? No, thank you. That, I love that question yeah. because look, I mean, over 10 years, um, we've helped a lot of great folks and, and you know, it's a pleasure, right? Mm -hmm. To do all that work. You know, one that really jumps out at me is, is the job creation that we've seen um, has been incredible. And, and that's a currency essentially of what we do as a nonprofit. Um, but sometimes it really counts where those jobs sure. are. And so we have this amazing uh, entrepreneur right across from my office. I, I have an office in Redbird in the southern sector of Dallas. And within the last 12 months, she's hired over 150 folks. Wow. And, and the wealth transfer and the what job kind of business? creation. Kind? So it's, it's mainly, uh, it's in the education space. Okay. okay. It's, it's really innovative. And she's mainly hiring consultants to supplement the public school curriculum. Okay. Uh, really necessary at this sure. point. And she's just blown it up. And, She's such a lovely person, but so smart. I mean, she did all this work. There's, you know, people talk about luck. I, mean, I, I watch her come in at 7 a.m. I see her leave at 7 p.m. Uh, if that's luck, it, it's done. It's a lot of hours of luck, right? It's um, grind, too, yeah, it's right? Grind. right? Yes. And it's so fun to just watch. She's so humble. And then I see that personally and her family and the wealth creation that she's making for her family, but also for community. I mean, she's creating jobs. In, in an area where there is a lot of unemployment. That's and we have a tendency in DFW mm -hmm. in general, uh, Fort Worth and Dallas, to think of ourselves as we look at the data and we say, look, we got zero unemployment. But when you dig a layer deeper, oftentimes that's you know, negative unemployment. In other words, we can't find enough people, right. qualified people for jobs in the northern sectors. Mm -hmm. And in the southern sectors, they've got massive unemployment. Right. I mean, it's a little like saying I've got one hand in ice water and one hand in boiling water, and on average, I'm okay. Right. Well, you're not okay. You have right. problems in both places. So I love that Miss Nikki's created so many jobs in a place that the jobs are really valued. That's amazing. No, no doubt in our community, there's disparity. And there's disparity from one part of it, one section of, of our city and other sections. And so the more things like this that people have great ideas and can find resources and people to help, um, it really is a game changer for them. It yeah. really could be, as you said, a, a path to, to a generational wealth. So yeah. thank you for what you're doing here in the community. Really sure. appreciate you yeah. bringing your expertise here yeah. and really helping those that uh, have great dreams turn those into reality. So appreciate you, Bill. Thank you very much. Of course. Thank you. Thanks for being here today. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. It was you. good seeing you again. Yeah.
And now I'm joined by Jose Alfaro, who is CEO of CoStarters. Welcome, Jose. Thank you. Glad Thank to you have you here. Great. Thank you. Thank so you. for those that are viewing and watching um, that don't know what CoStarters is, tell us a little bit about it and how you your journey to become CEO. Yeah. So CoStarters is a national accelerator program that works with cities and innovation centers and incubators that helps, uh, helps incubate and start and help uh, entrepreneurs thrive, specifically in the Main Street lifestyle space. So think okay. brick and mortars, think restaurants, coffee shops, okay. e-commerce, right? So there's a lot of accelerators like Techstars that are focused on high growth, innovation, you know, technology, um, and they get a lot of VC investment. We're a little bit different in the sense we have the same tools and resources, mentorship, um, but we're really more focused on really creating and revitalizing those main streets or those neighborhoods and uh, across the nation. So we're in a hundred different uh, cities, including Fort Worth, okay. um, and, and continuing to expand. And so uh, the journey to becoming a CEO uh, actually is, uh, you know, Coast, I always say this about Coasters, uh, you know, there's like, well, how is Coasters founded? It's a long story, probably a story for another day. Um, but I always say I get to be the steward of what a lot of uh, civic, business, and community leaders in Chattanooga uh, built, right? So Coasters was built under a nonprofit, and then we brought it into the private sector. And I've been involved in many facets. So, you know, growing or being in the hospitality industry, I wanted to do something different, really, under, and starting a few businesses. So I've started a few businesses. Uh, one succeeded, one failed miserably. That's Which story. is part of being an entrepreneur, right? <laughs> right, you gotta yes. figure that out, yeah, and for so, sure. But there was so much that I learned and I, I wish I could impart some of that wisdom to others. So I started just becoming a mentor and a facilitator in Chattanooga when it was starting. And as it was growing, um, the, the, as we were buying the business out to, or the IP to make it into a business, I just started going in, it's like, hey, how can I help? And so, uh, you know, obviously I'm really good at sales. So, so they're like, yeah, yeah, come on, you know, yeah. help us sell. And they're like, oh, wow, you're really good at business and obviously my training in the corporate world. And so from there, um, you know, we had a lot of talented individuals, but not really anybody that could, that knows how to really scale up a business and grow it. And so uh, back uh, in 2021, I was appointed CEO and uh, really focused on, you know, growing the market, uh, creating a brand that, that is uh, par to all those different uh, technology accelerators like Y Combinator, Generator, Techstars, but also showing people that there's a place to have multiple different types of entrepreneurship programs uh, in their cities and to allow, or not allow, but to um, help cities and, 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 and mayors and council members and economic developers think differently about entrepreneurships. Like, did you know this, that like in, in one of the cities that I work at, over three years, we helped them create 400 jobs. Okay, how'd right? you do that? So well, we supported 20 new, uh, 200 new business initiatives. Right? Okay. So within them starting through our program, um, they go through our program and we help them basically validate their idea. Okay. So if somebody wants to start a coffee shop, it's like, great. Instead of telling them, it's like, no, there's no more need for a coffee shop, validate it. Right. Go out to the market, see if there's a need. And because they're building that and they we're helping them start small, we're helping them create some type of test model. Right. Um, Maybe the, a proof of concept. Proof of, sort of yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Before they go and spend $100,000 on something that they don't know is going to work. Right. right. And so from the in day one, we're, we're showing them how to be profitable. Okay. Right. And so then after one year, they're, they're already full time working in their business. And in their second year, they're hiring their second person, third year, the third person, and they're growing. Right. So on average, on, on nationally, our our businesses that get started with us, 85% of them that go through a program start a business, 70% of them are profitable. Okay. Right? On wow. their first year. First year, which and is a big deal. Yeah, yes. right? Yeah. And then they're growing 150% year over year, which allows them to hire more people. Right. Right? And so when you look at those stats, and I always talk to cities, and I'm like, I know you're on, around, you're on attraction and retention, but what about the talent in your backyard? Right. Right? and the traditional business models out there to help, like the SBDC, SBA, the chambers, nothing against them, but they're very traditional. They're very mm -hmm. antiquated in, in the new world, right? Mm -hmm. You want to start a business, the first place you go to is Google. In the new world, like a tech world, is that what you mean? That yeah. We're doing yeah. a lot more online. Yeah. yeah, right? You go online and you find everything, and not, every there is and not everything there is, is easy or accessible, right. or un you can understand it, right? So yeah. one of the cool things that we've done are three, I always say three things that makes us unique mm -hmm. is we make things accessible, we okay. make things simple. So we write everything, all our programming, all our mentoring, all our training is done at a seventh grade level. 
because we want to make entrepreneurship accessible to everybody, right. right? I don't care if you graduate high school, you have a doctor's degree, entrepreneurship is hard. Yeah, right? for, sure, for sure. And so we got to give you the fundamentals to do that. Yeah. The second thing is people need a community, mm -hmm. right? There's a lot of times where these entrepreneurs go siloed and they're on their own, they're trying to figure it out on their own. It's like, no, you need a community. You need somebody to challenge and test your assumptions. Right. And then the third thing is we believe in, um, in the person, right? So a lot of times small business investments, a lot of times happen when you have a great idea in the tech space, right? Right. VC, venture capitalists will go out and give you all this funding. But like, there's great ideas mm -hmm. um, happening in the lifestyle world, right? Yeah. And how can we invest in them, right? So I look at an example of like Sriracha, mm -hmm. right? Started out selling it from the van, just figuring it out. Now it's what it's like, I think a $55 million organization. Yeah. My right? girls love it, they right? use it all the time. Right. Yeah. So Apparently we there's only certain brands they like, <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest. Cause there's others sitting in the cabinet yeah, and they're yeah, like, we yeah, don't really like yeah, that. Right, so yeah. right, you gotta so, find the right one. And so there's multiple of these stories where you just don't know, right? But can we allow the entrepreneur to decide if they want to be a high growth venture mm -hmm. or a lifestyle venture, but then also can they switch halfway and through the year or halfway through their business cycle? It's like, no, I have something here. Can, can I franchise right. this? Can I expand it? Can I grow it? There's a lot of opportunities there, right? And so- It sounds like you wear a lot of different hats. Yeah. So what's a typical day like <laughs> for you? Um, Is there a typical day? The, the, I don't know that there's a typical day, right? I, I would say right now as we're growing, there's certain things that I want to keep close to, my, close to me. Uh, I, I would say, you know, definitely supporting the team. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I have designers and writers and, you know, our marketing team and our operations, customer success team. And, you know, they're always asking me questions and I'm trying to empower them to really handle some of those, those, those uh, you know, challenges that come up, you know, in serving our Delegating clients. Delegating a little more. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. right. So, um, you know, but as we grow, there's just a lot more challenges and we're trying to expand and, you know, my, my thing is, you know, I don't care how great your process is. If you're not focused on the customer, we're failing, right? right. So, so a lot of that. And then I, I would say a lot of talking to, you know, shaking hands, kissing babies. So talking to mayors and, you know, economic developers, going to a lot of trade shows. You said shows how many cities? A hundred. A hundred cities. Yeah. And you were in Dallas, you said, for a little while mm -hmm. and then moved to Chattanooga. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were talking a little bit before. Mm -hmm. And then you came back like you're Fort here Worth. in Fort Worth. Yes. What, what really drew you um, to come back or come to Fort Worth? Yeah, well, you know, so we, my wife's family is from, from the Dallas, Fort Worth area. My wife uh, actually- We call it Fort Worth Dallas, just yeah, so you Fort know, Fort Worth Dallas area. <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure I do that next time. Um, so my wife worked at Cook's when she was doing her internship yeah. after graduating and she really liked Fort Worth. I really enjoyed Fort Worth when I lived in Dallas. Um, and so when we were moving back, I was like, you know, I just want to still have that sense of culture of people of connection of creative artists that that just some, there's something unique and special about it and so um as we were looking you know I, I went to waco went to denton we went to fort worth went to weatherford and we're like you know what fort worth just feels right and it just felt right and and you know I haven't looked back so haven't we, looked but, back. yeah, yeah so that's great love it so. what does it mean what's the the mission overall and what do you what, what's success look like for you for me personally? Yeah, for, for you and for the group too. I mean, what is yeah, that? Yeah, well, that's a great question. Uh, um, it catches me on a different day, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, right, right. Uh, you know, I think for me, success looks like that you're able to do what you are passionate about, mm -hmm. right? So you've been able to come alongside someone and, and build whatever they're yeah, passionate about, right? right? And so, and, and, but also removing those barriers, mm -hmm. right? How can we move, remove those barriers? Because I think a lot of times, you know, we, we, we say open blanket statements, like mm -hmm. they can pit, pick themselves up from their bootstraps or give, you know, teach them how to fish. And I'm like, there's a lot of statements that we just put out there without understanding cultural, family, you know, regional differences and dynamics. And so for me, like success is, can we listen more? Mm -hmm. Can we desire to understand more so that we can truly help individuals find what they want to do because a lot of times people don't know what they want to do sure it's really I'm still hard. trying to figure it out <laughs> right? to be honest with like, you, so. you know <laughs> you asked my wife she said the same thing you know so uh yeah so i think that's that's probably what i would look at success like that's what i want us when I, mean, I want people to think about co-starters that's what I, like it's like not that co-starters is like dominating the market sure we will do that if we're investing in people well sure so, that's a great philosophy yeah. are you seeing certain trends happening right now in the business community so yes, right. So like we look at Fort Worth, mm -hmm. um, it's very similar to what's happening in other cities, right? Especially in rural America. Mm -hmm. So, you know, back I would say from 2010 to 2020, there was this big push for innovation technology, mm -hmm. and even the smaller cities who didn't have the infrastructure to bring in technology companies had a hard time. 
And what I always tell people though is like, hey, you know, if you're gonna move a technology business and you have the infrastructure, you have the university, you have the workforce, do you have a culture? Right. No. Why that not? brings that together and wants to accept right. it, yeah. wants to be a part of it. Because nobody wants to just work all day long, right. then go home and do nothing. They want to go out and have a drink with their friends, have good food. People are-, are There was some community, well, right? Com exactly, right? Yeah. So community is really important. So um, I would say there's a, there's a big push right now. So, and then now post pandemic, there's a big push for people to have a quality of life. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily of like, they get to do what they want in the sense of like, how can I enjoy my experiences, right? So we lived in an industrial age where it was all about factory and processes. Mm -hmm. And then we went to the technology age or data age. I believe in the next couple of years, we're gonna be moving into what I call more of an experiential age where AI and all these things are gonna make life easier for us. Mm -hmm. How can we experience things, right? Cause now we can have friends all over the world. Mm -hmm. We can have connections all over the world. We can have things done for us easily, but like what people want are those experiences. Mm -hmm. Why are coffee shops growing? I mean, we have what, there's five coffee shops within this area. Right. They want connections, they want community, breweries. And then there's like all these different things that like the, the, the ax throwing and all these different fun activities, but that's all entrepreneurs. They're entrepreneurs too. And so I do believe that there's a revival in entrepreneurship. What I get excited about is that it's not just one sector. Mm -hmm. It's not just innovation and health and science and AI, but it's also around community. Right. And that, that's really exciting. So you're seeing that in Fort Worth as well. You know, yeah, there's, I there's love a, that you've hit on community, <laughs> quality of life, yeah. the small business aspect. That's yeah. really what we're talking yeah. about, are, are encouraging and, and yeah. supporting small businesses when people have an idea, making sure that it yeah. will financially yeah. be feasible for them and yeah. work what we're doing and so I appreciate your time I appreciate yeah. all the things you're doing to help in that in yeah. that sort of sphere yeah and just thanks for being with us today absolutely this has been a great absolutely. conversation and how can people find you yeah so I'm at the create Fort Worth uh, uh, we're here right now in the, space. Yes, yeah, yeah so yeah. I'm here uh, but also like connect with the create Fort Worth team mm -hmm. so co-starters is being deployed at create Fort Worth so a yeah. lot of our programming and a lot of the business leaders in the Fort Worth area are gonna get trained mm -hmm. to run some of our programming in the community. So if you ever wanna have an idea or wanna know more, come and talk to me, but also talk to the Create Fort Worth team. Um, they can help you also connect you to the right resource and getting you started and getting your idea and business started, so. That's great. Thanks for being here today, yeah, I appreciate you. it. I appreciate it, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Fort Worth Forward. I love doing these shows, so I get outside, I learn a little bit more about the community and what's happening. I hope you do too. If you have any ideas for us, send them our way. Again, thanks for watching, appreciate it.